Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season two finale of Barry. A great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, immediately picking after the, picking up after the events of the last episode, Barry shows up. He's racing to find um, Fuchs and Gene, and Fuchs has a gun to the back of Gene's head. Which, to be fair, it really wouldn't have worked in your favor with a suicide. But I guess, like, the last episode, but I guess he's, like, the way the last episode made it seem like he was behind him. But it's, like, he's at an angle. So I guess it's, like, right, if you position yourself right and you get him to pull the, like, you, you, um, fire the shot like that. And then you just, like, put the gun in his hand. You make it seem like he's the one that... I mean, you'd have to also, like, you know, from a crime perspective, you'd have to get him to fire the gun, too, because that way there's gun residue on his hand, because if not, it's going to look a little suspicious. Like, oh, he pulled the trigger, but there's no gun residue on his hand. That whole thing, right? But Fuchs couldn't do it, because Fuchs has never actually had to kill anybody. Yeah, he sent Barry to do stuff, but he's never had to get his hands dirty himself, so taking a life... Sending someone else to do it because Barry's always done the dirty work, and even Fuchs had never, like, even as pissed off at, like... Because I guess that was the whole point, like, to make Barry's entire life come crumbling down. Because it seems like force, like, I guess the whole point was to maybe, like, tarnish Gene's name. And Barry would have no choice because not only would Gene's legacy would be destroyed. Like, everything and everything that Gene meant to him would be destroyed as well. So, again, that's kind of Fuchs, like, ultimate goal in the end. But he changed it to, like, a, you know what? I'm actually going to leave you here. The cops are rolling up. So, what I'm going to just do is I'm going to let you take the fall for this. Barry gets there in time. And Barry looks kind of panicked and he closes the trunk. I thought Barry did that because it looked like he put like he put his hand inside the trunk. I was wondering whether or not Barry did that on purpose because, you know, it's like, right, he there might be evidence, prints and stuff like that of his on um, Janice's body. So I thought he was trying to put his prints everywhere. So it's like, oh, they find my prints around the car. So it's not going to be that wild. But May and them kind of take Barry and Gene in. Because the problem is the identity that Fuchs gave doesn't exist. So, obviously, it looks like Gene's the one that actually committed a murder. And it's like, yeah, the only person that was out there. But Barry's like, no, I talked to the guy because he knows Fuchs did it. It's like he literally did talk to Fuchs on the phone. And there's even the confession. And I was like, Fuchs didn't sound that much like Gene. But maybe in that moment he did. I guess it's like, right, he quiets his voice enough. But I'm like, I was surprised by that because I was like, he doesn't sound anything like Gene. I didn't think he did because I was like, oh, he couldn't do any. I mean, it's like. I don't know, it just seemed a little too easy for you just to be like, yep, he, uh, yeah, just kind of accepting the fact that, yep, uh, uh, Gene totally did it, and that's the end all to it, and, uh, yeah, we're just gonna kind of leave it at that. And you feel, and it's so heartbreaking, because you see how disheveled, not disheveled, but, like, how disheartened, uh, Gene is with this whole situation, you know, and it's like, right, he's kind of, like, he's seen Janice's body, he's staring at it, now that's enough to break him, and now he's being accused of her murder, too, it's like, no, she was the love of my life, I would never do anything like that to her, so Barry's got to deal with that, he's trying to find Fuchs, because he's like, Fuchs, I'm gonna kill you, but Fuchs is like, oh, you can, you can easily resolve this, Barry, all you have to do is confess to killing Janice yourself, oh, but you won't do it, you know why, because you are a selfish prick, don't make it seem like I'm just the only selfish one, you built this life for yourself, and you're not willing to give it up, yeah, even if it means saving Mr. Cousineau, even though he's supposed to be so important to you, that's just kind of uh, Fuchs' way of uh, putting, uh, sticking the middle fingers to Barry. Once again, it's all to make Barry pay, but it's like, Barry hasn't done anything in this regard to deserve this level of animosity that Fuchs is throwing at him, but it's like, right, everything that we built together, us being the team that we've been for so long, Barry spit in his face when it came to all of that, kind of saying, like, he's nothing without Barry, so that hurt his pride, and it's like, right, in his own way, we are family, and it felt like his family was turning his back on him, so, not saying it's justified, but I can see where I Fuchs kind of popped off the way he did, so, but, uh, he definitely got scared of Barry, he knows to be scared of Barry, because what does he do, he goes to, uh, Hank, and he wants to talk to Hank about, like, hey, let's, um, I, I need your army, because he needs an army of people to protect, because he knows what kind of proficient killer Barry is, so he's trying to find a, which I'm almost like, do you really think that 
uh, Hank would give you an army to protect you, considering it's like, you know, like, Barry's kind of his best friend, and, you know, once again, that's his perspective and not necessarily Barry's, but it's like, did you really think he'd be copacetic about that? I guess he never told, uh, and I guess that was on purpose, he never told Hank exactly where him and, um, where him and Barry stood. He just says, like, oh, we were not really copacetic, we're not seeing eye to eye, because Hank, he's like, you can't... He's telling Fuchs that you came to me at the wrong time. My men don't want to listen to me. Which I love that he's trying to get, like, the heroin table and, and stuff like that. And he's ordering it online. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get a table. Oh, yeah, something for a heroin, 30 kilos. I'm like, should you should you be should you be saying that? Like, unless you're ordering from, like, a criminal. Like, why would you be saying that for someone to be recording you over the... But it's like, Hank is too... Lo he's too lovable. He's too pure for this world, even though he's the criminal that he is. He's just, he's just too pure. And now none of his men are listening to him. Because uh, Home Dude, the one that Barry uh, really took an interest in training-wise, uh, that guy is the one that's kind of leading the charge now. Then Cristobal and Esther show up. And luckily, it was Fuchs who disabled... Uh, um, Disarm the situation, which I love that, like, Fuchs is saying stuff, and Cristobal can't hear him, he's like, is he talking to us, oh no, he's on the Bluetooth, he must be talking to someone else, and then he's, and then he can hear Fuchs say Cristobal, he's like, oh no, 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 that, that was my name, so he must be talking to us, and I love this giant metaphor he made, which is so interesting, he's able to put, put, to put this all together and articulate it when it comes to Hank and Cristobal's relationship, but he couldn't do the same thing with him and Barry, it's one of those things of, he acted out of anger, and now it's like, right, he's done something he can't take back, he's already set everything in motion and so the thing is that basically he talks about like right you guys fit together like such good pieces like him and Barry did but eventually you grow off and kind of do your own and kind of do your own weird ass thing but then it's like right you've grown so much that your pieces don't necessarily fit together anymore but he's like you and Hank you still fit perfectly and the whole metaphor really got to Christopher he's tearing up and then him and Hank and he's like oh I'm so sorry about that you you, you crossed me he's like no 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 I I tried to kill Esther like I get it I betrayed you and you're just like hugging it out and even to the point Christopher puts his leg up on Hank and you know it's like yeah they're kind of celebrating and you kind of feel bad because like Esther looks like she's a little heartbroken I wonder if given the opportunity what that would have turned into would Hes uh, would Esther have tried to kill Hank you know after everything because it's like right you did try to kill me and you know I I'm not so quick to forgive betrayal like because she because her and Chris of all were actually pretty tight and I think she she never emoted a lot, but I think legitimately having Hank and Cristobal and Fuchs like hanging out, having fun, laughing it up like that, she kind of felt like the outsider. Because I think despite everything, her and Cristobal were hitting it off. It's like oh, like you know, it's like oh, we we were kind of a a pair in this this puzzle piece metaphor, but now it's like oh, I guess we don't we don't fit together anymore because you fit more with Hank. I think she was kind of feeling a little like that, and I'm so curious where that scene would have gone had not Barry ended up killing her. Uh, which, let's circle back to uh, the performances and stuff like that. I thought, for whatever reason, I thought they were going to put on a big performance of... Uh, but I, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, Sally's piece is just going to be her and Barry, because it's just like her and Sam. But I thought everyone else was going to have... But it's like, no, it was a big stage for everyone to put on their performances. And it's like 400 plus C. And I love that Barry keeps pointing it out and Sally's stressed out about it. So she's like, can you move the fuck on about the amount of people here because she's already stressing out about it so i thought that was fascinating and then everyone's putting on a performance it was like nick it's like oh yeah nick throw up a little louder he threw up and just the metaphor of like oh what i threw up in the toilet wasn't even a three year day euro three day pizza that i had uh that i poured bleach on to clean i was like oh what and then, like, Sasha's whole thing, and she's like, no, 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 I don't think you guys are getting it. There was a horse down the street, and then there was a picture. I was like, oh, is that actually a picture of, like, you know, uh, Kirby Howe Batiste as a little girl? That's what I thought. But she's like, yeah, this girl is not me. I'm like, it'd be funny if that little girl was an actual picture of her as a little girl. Because she's like, but then she went into the whole thing of, right, but I don't have any pictures because, like, you know, my, um, what was she said? I think she said my uncle burned down the house while my father or mother was still inside and they died but she's like oh that's not what this is about it's like that sh but i'm like is that what that's supposed to be is that supposed to be a metaphor for the fact is that oh you're so focused on this the the elite because she because she kept 
pushing that and everyone's like no one in a class got it it's like she's tripping about like right i didn't live in a rural area i lived in a city and there was a horse there i'm like because i guess it's like there's not typically any animals there so for an animal to pop up it's kind of weird like she's making it seem like that's a traumatic thing but we hear there's other trauma in her life but i think it's just her way brain's way of compensating and it's supposed to be the dark humor of it all that she's focusing on such a non-traumatic thing and ignoring all the potential trauma she has in her life. Uh, home dude was doing a whole, home, a whole thing about, uh, oh yeah, being left at a garage sale and stuff like that. It's like, man. Oh, and Jermaine, his whole uh, deal, that's actually, once again, there's some trauma there, you know? And don't they, ain't that like a stereotype of like, yeah, like, you know, the more tortured an artist did, the better sh shit they make. You know, I'm, I'm sure that's the stereotype, but... Jermaine's whole thing was like, he growing up, his dad was his hero, and he's like, yeah, my mom, rather than tell me the truth, said that he got abducted by aliens, and then I found him one day strung out in the streets. I gave him some money, and I haven't seen him since, so I don't know if he's okay or not, but at the end of the day, he's still my hero. Uh, abducted by aliens or not, you're like, that's all, that's some heavy stuff. I don't remember what Natalie's was, because we didn't get to see her perform, but I'm trying to remember, like, I don't, I'm sure it came up, maybe it came up during class, I don't remember, but I'm like, dude, that's, everyone's got some dark shit, I mean, hell, like, let's not forget what Sally's about, Sally's is about her abusive husband, it's like, Jesus, so, that was interesting, and Barry's kind of so consumed by this whole um, Gene and Fuchs thing that, they're ready, like, obviously, Sally slaps him to get him, and he's like, right, stay in that place, because she, he wasn't focused, and so they're about to put on a performance, but Sally takes the reins, and everything she wanted to say before, instead of, like, Barry being the one that, like, you know, being truthful to the piece, what ends up happening is, she ends up flipping the table and cussing him out and tells him to get out of there, which I'm sure for Barry, he was almost taken back by, but part of me wonders, did... Obviously, it was for the performance, but I wonder, did Barry kind of internalize some of that just because of everything going on? And obviously, um, that's a real heartbreaking thing because everyone else was like, oh, shit, because everyone else heard the real piece. And so now Sally's like heartbroken because like, right, she got nervous in front of all those people. It's like this was a piece that was supposed to be her truth. And what she's like, what did I do? I lied because as her and Barry were going to say, she's like, right, we really, it's about truth, right? Right. And when the time came, because it's understandable, you were being vulnerable. It'd be, a, she said, openly admitting to a crowd of people what happened to her, that, you know, her husband abused her and she went back to him. In fact, she even comforted him after the fact, which is, you know, I mean, you know, and she plays no fault in that. You know, it's just like, you know, people find themselves in those desperate situations, but she blames herself now. It's like, I had an opportunity to tell my truth. I lied. She's like, I'm not an artist. Like, because I think for her, she made such a, she made such a point. Like, this is my piece and I'm going to do something with it and give it the opportunity. What'd she do? She lied. She made herself out to be something that wasn't true to herself and to the piece. Lindsay knows that and everyone else is like oh my and so many people crowd around it's like oh like someone's like I know someone that was in that situation and oh my god you're so brave and so courageous to do that and all these people are, are surrounding her she would normally love the attention and I'm cute like we see the tears still in her eyes and I don't know which way she's going to lean whether it's just the whole thing of like right I which I'm immediately taking it as I lied about this piece and now I'm being like praised for it. it's like this this saying that's supposed to be my story my truth i painted it a certain way and now because also that was a whole thing like sam was li uh, yelling at her because oh she lied and stuff like that being dramatic y yada yada so on and so forth and now she's getting all this praise about it because even her manager which i believe is her name's Lindsay, right tried to be like i'm sorry i'm the one that kind of like pushed you into it because even she was nervous about this whole thing because she kind of went out on a limb for Sally, and she's like, no, 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 everything's okay, you're an artist, and my part is to support the artist, and she's like ripping up paper, she's like, everything's gonna be okay, yeah, and she's trying to smile and pretend like everything's okay, but even she was nervous as hell, and now seeing all these people gather around Sally, so the question is, how is Sally gonna respond to this, is she just gonna lean into it, like, yeah, thanks, and kind of be praise happy about it, or is it just, because Sally does have a tendency to also just kind of accept all that, but also just kind of, she's kind of move on, but like, she's still like, torment going to probably be tor tormenting herself 
going forward from that because the the both of the mics were like oh that was good they were like i'm glad like most stuff ends like a bummer or something like that because to them it's like oh that was that ended on a powerful note her truth though didn't end on a powerful i mean it's still powerful in its own right because at the end what happened she did walk away despite all of that that still takes a lot of courage but in her mind and her argument probably is like no it was when he was passed out in the floor drunk me and my friend stuck in there got my stuff and just left and never came back so for her, there might not be courage in that, but at least the story she told, you know, the quote unquote lie, there was courage in that. And so that's probably going to eat her alive as, you know, this is supposed to be her story, her piece. So we'll see how um everything kind of plays out going forward from there. But after, you know, Barry got in contact with um, Leo, because it turns out that Jean got released because they found the pendant from the Chechens, the one that... um. Hank had given Barry saying, like, right, a debt is paid, and now it looks like the Chechens are the ones who did it. So it's like, oh, everything kind of luckily worked out. Um, and Barry's like, right, tell your dad, just, you know, let me know if he's okay, but also tell him that he was right, people can change. And in that moment, um, Barry found out where Fuchs was, and he went on a massive massive killing spree he killed esther he killed her people your boy christopher like like kind of high high legging his legs as he's like trying to escape from the gunfire it's like your boy barry would just i mean because everyone else they're decent but they're not well trained like barry is it's just like it's kind of interesting man came in with a handgun and wiped you all out you all got wiped and the moment it came down to like hank's number one dude i was like oh god how's this gonna play out and i was like I figured he wouldn't shoot Barry, but I was like, I thought Barry would, you know, take time and be like, oh, I'm sorry, like, where's Fuchs? And then, you know, it still was the thing that Barry killed a lot of people because he was so angry. And what did he do the moment he busted in the room? The guy kind of put his gun down a little bit and smiled. He's like, oh, it's you, Barry. And Barry blew him away. No hesitation. I was like, because Barry, we've seen, they, knowing his story, we now know Barry, when he's consumed by rage all he sees is red he killed everyone and he was so focused and so pissed at fuchs that he killed everyone in his way and the moment he came back in the room he finally noticed he's like oh my god it's just like his time in afghanistan you killed someone that wasn't responsible just because you were so blinded by your rage you had think things through you killed everyone and it's like right you had that whole conversation oh people can change it's like in this instant showing that you haven't changed that you're still that same person because he hasn't really properly dealt with it i think Fuchs got him out of like that what German hospital they sent him to afterwards that like he probably never really got the help he needed to plus he's probably been you know killing for a living just made him double down on all of that he never really properly healed and dealt with all of that so so things kind of end there uh but here the head uh guy he was actually coming to get Hank he was going to start taking over and send Hank back to um, send Hank back to Chechnya, but then it turns out when he arrives, he's like, oh, hey, Esther's here dead, and lo and behold, what bullet was used to kill her? The one that was meant to send a message, and Hank is like, oh, hey, Batir, hey, and Batir's smiling, because I'm assuming he's thinking Hank is responsible for all of this, and he's like, hey, you, you made it happen, you got it done, um, so all is right with the world, so Hank probably gets to stay, and everything's gonna be Gucci, uh, but then we end it all with um, Jean reminiscing about Janice, finding her body, and then remembering what Fuchs whispered in his ear. Barry Berkman did this. Now, I'm not sure if Jean's going to remember Barry's real name or not. Because Barry just mainly goes by Barry Block. I don't think he's ever really gone about... He called himself Berkman at the beginning, but I, I think Gene will still remember that. But maybe he won't. I'm leaning into he will, but that complicates things because Barry cares a lot about Gene. He did a lot... He killed and sacrificed a lot for this life that he's kind of built for himself as Barry Block. And now it's all coming to unravel because of Fuchs, so... It's definitely going to be interesting to see where all this goes. Obviously, I'm recording these late. I got I, ju I jumped into Barry too late, and um, other stuff kept getting in the way. So I'm only now finishing season two. Season three is already started. Uh, actually, the latest episode, episode three, just came out yesterday. So, 
I am so excited to see where season three takes us going forward from here. Because I would have assumed Gene was never going to find out the truth about Janice. But, of course, it's not going to work out like that. And once again, what happens with Fuchs, how, uh, what Barry does going forward from here after doing what he did. Because uh, the cops are going to be looking at the Chechens for this. So I'm sure Hank and them are going to get tied up in all of this maybe too. So probably going to be more blowback because it's like, right. Time and time again, Hank looks after Barry, but Barry did come in here and he did kill quite a few of your people too, not just Cristobal. So, and Barry kind of was your guy too. So, we'll see. Cristobal did. It did seem like Cristobal got away. So, I'm once again him and Fuchs. Everything with the acting class, Sally, Gene. So many questions. We'll just ultimately have to. Wait. Well, I'll ultimately have to wait and see how everything plays out in season three. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.